We might kick off, gang. Welcome everyone to Study Melbourne's Career Catalyst online workshop on how to become a lifelong learner. If this is your first webinar with Career Catalyst, welcome along. If it is a repeat um, webinar for you, we're really glad to have you here at the next uh, webinar in the series. There'll be about 20 of these webinars over the year. So we look forward to having you along for many of the webinars as we go along. Today, we're speaking all about lifelong learning and how you can really step into that mindset where you are growing and evolving as a student, as an adult, and how you can take that through to your entire career. So let's kick off and get into it. First things first, my name is Penny Holloway. I'm the Head of Marketing and Communications here at Intern Match, and I'll be your presenter today. And this is a, a topic that I'm particularly passionate about. I spend a lot of time here at Intern Match talking through all things lifelong learning and upskilling. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of that insight with you today. Now, throughout today's session, if at any point you have any questions, comments, or concerns, there are there is a comment section. There is also a tab for Q&A. So please let me know at any point if you have any questions about the content. At the end of the session, we will go through all of that. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to their elders past and present and I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who might be here today. So what we're going to go through in today's session is everything and anything about growth mindset and how that couples with lifelong learning. This is a great time to be going into this webinar because we're entering into the Christmas break period and it's a really great time to spend reflecting and planning for your future year ahead. So it's a really nice time to be looking at some of the things you could be doing to be contributing to your lifelong learning skills and really just getting into that mindset so that you're ready to rock and roll. So we're gonna be covering off today a bit about how lifelong learning can benefit you and your career as a student and entering into the workforce as a graduate. We'll look at what lifelong learning actually looks like as an individual or to look out for how to really step into and embrace that growth mindset and ways that you can get started today and really make it a habit so it becomes second nature to you and part of your day to day. So let's just kick off by setting the scene a bit around what a lifelong learner is. It's someone who uses both formal and informal learning opportunities, keyword there being the informal section, to foster continuous development and improvement of the knowledge and skills needed for employment and personal fulfillment. You might also know this as having a growth mindset. We're going to delve into that a little deeper as we go along today. The important thing to note here is that everybody can change and grow through application and experience, and you are not stuck in where you are now. We can all take on this growth mindset and we can all become lifelong learners and in turn find successes through our personal and professional life at any point. You can create and evolve this mindset. So I want all of you to take that knowledge with you today as we go through the webinar and really hold on to the idea that you can embrace this fully starting now. So let's get into it and see how we can embrace that growth mindset and lifelong learning skills. So first things first, why should you want to become a lifelong learner? Many of you will be at, will be studying at the moment or close to finish or having finished your studies. You've just spent a long time learning. So the idea of stepping into another learning environment may seem completely bonkers right now. But the beautiful thing about lifelong learning is that it is so much more than study as you know it as a student. It is something that you can just innately add into your life and it can become a way of life and living. So let's look at how learning can look as an adult. It's all in the mindset. You may be familiar with these terms. There's a couple of different ways that you can approach mindsets. Perhaps you've heard of a fixed mindset. 
versus a growth mindset. A fixed mindset is someone who believes that intelligence, talent, and those qualities that help you to grow and develop are innate in that they are part of you from the get-go and that they're kind of unchangeable. That is someone who has a fixed mindset, what they believe about lifelong learning. However, someone with a growth mindset, by contrast, believes that intelligence and talent can be developed and finessed through practice and effort. And that is exactly where I want you to think and look at today. We are sitting in that growth mindset. Some of the things and um, topics you may have heard about these particular mindsets is things like that intelligence and talent are innate, is a belief of a fixed mindset person, versus a growth mindset person believes that intelligence and ta talent are dynamic. They are ever evolving, they can be developed, and they can continue to grow. Someone with a fixed mindset might say, uh, have a dislike for criticism and feedback. They might really repel receiving feedback. Whereas someone with a growth mindset will use feedback and even failure as a learning opportunity. They see the positive in being able to receive um, constructive criticism. Someone with a fixed mindset may believe this is, that success of others is threatening. They don't want to see others succeed because that is at um, the loss to them. Whereas someone with a growth mindset is a focused on the process and not the outcome and so is enjoying the journey. And in tow with that, they would not be threatened by the success of others. They would celebrate and boost up others and their success because they know that it is a benefit to them as well as a team. Not surprisingly, with all that in mind, your mindset plays a major role in your motivation, resilience, and your ability to have achievements. So I want you to keep front of mind that the way that you think and feel about these things plays a really crucial role in your ability to achieve in life, both professionally and personally. So what is so great about being a lifelong learner? Well, many, many things, and it's not just to do with career development. It's also incredibly good for your brain and your mental health. If you are constantly evolving, looking for opportunity, challenging yourself, your brain is constantly firing, which is fantastic for long-term brain health. It can help to ward off some of the diseases that we know that affect our brain, our cognitive behavior, and our ability to recall. And in the short term and long term, it's sensational for your mental health, learning and developing, challenging yourself and having successes and wins and perceiving them as successes and wins is incredibly great for your ability to keep a really healthy mental health perspective. It can lead to beneficial career advancements. If you are constantly growing, evolving and upskilling yourself, then there is no reason why those uh, traits and skills will not benefit you in future roles. They can be things like transferable skills, soft skills, or particularly even like those uh, techni technical skills that are specific to your career and your role. It will help you develop those beautiful practical skills and soft skills. Often through being a life learner, we're going to talk a little bit about what that actually looks like from a day to day, you are gaining some sensational skills that just help you to get along in life. Soft skills and practical skills are those things that help you communicate, work with others, integrate into workforces and environments and communities. And they're really important across not just any job, but all facets of life and all relationships in your life. You can learn and finesse these through lifelong learning. When you find your passion, you find your people. The idea of lifelong learning means that you are constantly trying new things, reaching into areas that perhaps you wouldn't usually, trying out new bits and pieces and taking on new skills. And as you're doing that, 
naturally you're going to find out things that you're passionate about. And when you find things that you are passionate about, you will find other people who are also passionate about those things. Finding your people is so key to living our lives, both in a workplace, finding community socially, and finding our relationships. By finding out your passions, you are more likely to merge towards people that you relate to a lot better in all aspects. If any of you came along to our personal brand session last week, our in-person event in Melbourne, you will know that things like this help to build your personal brand. Your personal brand is ever evolving. My brand today is very different what my brand was a year ago, three years ago, 10 years ago. And it's changed and evolved because I have changed and evolved as a person. And it's evolved through me taking on new hobbies, new skills, learning new things, taking new courses and evolving my career. You can take your brand wherever you want to take it to, as long as you are constantly evolving it through lifelong learning, taking on new skills. It's your option to pivot that wherever you'd like it to go. And lastly, it's no surprise that all these things will build your confidence. Knowledge is power. And when you expand your knowledge, you will build your self-confidence across all aspects of your life. So keep that in mind as we go through today's session. So what does lifelong learning look like? Well, someone who is a lifelong learner, and you probably can think of some people that come to mind that are uber successful, uh, perhaps they are founders, entrepreneurs, philanthropists, uh, maybe they're in the media, maybe they're not. But those people that you look up to in life are doing this stuff almost as though it's just part of their day to day. Unlike regular study, lifelong learning is very voluntary. You choose to do it. You choose to step into that space. It is often self-motivated or self-initiated. You're not forced to approach things in a lifelong learning lens. You do it because you want to. You take on that inquisitive mindset. It doesn't always require a cost. That's the best bit about all these things. And we're going to go through what it actually can, how you can actually get started today. It is free to be a lifelong learner. It is free to be naturally inquisitive. So we're going to look at how you can start to replace some of those things that perhaps are quite costly to finding some really vital life skills through lifelong learning that don't require a cost. One of the main things about lifelong learning is that it's often really informal. It's casual. It's day-to-day. It doesn't even look like learning until you really drill down into it. Unlike study, turning up to um, a university course or an education provider every single day, going to set structured sessions and seminars and lectures, this is often woven throughout your day-to-day, throughout the 12 hours that you are awake you are taking in learning opportunities at all points. It is often self-taught or instruction that you've gone out and actually sought out yourself, but there will be an element of self-management in that learning. The motivation to be a lifelong learner is out of personal interest or personal development. People who really approach lifelong learning Do so because they want to, because they want to grow as a human, they want to grow as a person, they want to grow their professional and career development. And as I said, if you keep sticking at it, it can become a way of life, very natural, very comfortable and flows and fits into your day to day and actually just becomes a part of your personality more than anything. So how do we embrace, let's introduce the concept of growth mindset. Remember, we're going from being in a fixed mindset to being in a growth mindset. In order to be a lifelong learner, you really need to hold and embrace that growth mindset. So how do we get there? Moving your mind from I can't do this, that's a very fixed mindset, to I can't do this yet. A lifelong learner, someone with a a growth mindset, has the opinion that they can't do something yet, but that they can learn it. 
we can all take on this mindset. So first things first, to move into a new habit, we have to break the old one. So many of us, none of us are perfect. So we're all going to have bits of fixed mindset that really ring us back to. We may need to kick some of those habits to really step into a lifelong learning lens. So first things first, we need to acknowledge our current mindset. When we are making decisions, when we are approached the challenge, when we are moving about our day to day, we have to acknowledge that perhaps as a human, we may be a little bit nervous or scared of where things can lead, that we may be a little bit set in our ways. And that's understandable because we do things over and over again for the time you've been on earth. And so we get a bit fixed in what we think about those things. So acknowledging our current mindset puts us in the frame of mind of being ready to change that mindset. The second step is to become aware of your fixed mindset triggers. What are the things that really kick you into gear of being in that sedentary, can't move, it's just the way things are mindset? Is it receiving criticism at work or at university? Is it being potentially disappointed or the fear of being disappointed by something that you're like, this is how it is, I can't change, this scenario won't change? What are the things that really kick you off? I didn't used to be great at receiving criticism or feedback from my employers. I got very defensive, but being able to acknowledge that and look into how I can learn from those scenarios has helped me step into this a lifelong learning phase of my career, which also you want to get to as you want to grow your career as you get older, you need to step away from that if you want to be in the path of moving up the ranks, getting promotions, um, leading a team. You can't be in a fixed mindset to lead a team. Recognize that you have a choice. When you are faced with a difficult situation or if it's a situation that you perceive to be difficult, you need to be able to step into a zone that says, I know that I feel right now that I'm being triggered and that perhaps I want to just stay in the mindset that I am, that this can't be changed. But you have to recognize that you have a choice. No situation is final. So you can change your mindset in that moment to think, hmm, can I look at it in a different way? I can't do that because I don't know how to do that task. Well, Perhaps you can learn to do that task. Can you take a minute to switch your brain and move into that space? The second last step is to then do exactly what I just did, which is to talk back with a growth mindset voice. If you are faced with a challenge at work or perhaps you want to apply for a job and you note that that job says that you need to know how to use Excel proficiently. You need to be comfortable with formulas and using Excel in a really advanced way. You could look at that application and go, well, I can do everything else on it, but I can't do that, so I just won't apply for that role. Or can you sit in that scenario and recognize that you have a choice and talk back to that thought and go, well, hang on a second. Can I learn Excel? Can I learn enough to get me through to apply for the role and continue to practice that and self-motivate and self-teach to make me a better candidate? Well, you can, absolutely. So what can you combat your brain with when you are in those scenarios? And then finally, take action. Step forward, step into the unknown and have a crack. That is the only way forward for a growth mindset. We're just having a go. Great. So you're in that growth mindset. You're moving forward. How can you nurture and make this your way of life now? First things first is that you need to be able to be welcoming to feedback and suggestions for improvement. Feedback at work. Feedback from family and friends and partners. 
can you welcome the idea of hearing someone out and looking to improve in areas of your life? Second step is to replace the word failing with learning. We are all just walking through life, having a go, making it up as we go along. Can you replace the word of fail, failure or failing with just simply learning? Every experience we go through with life is a learning experience. And even when you're fantastic at things, you can always do better at it. You can always change your approach, finesse your approach, pivot, optimize what you're doing. So can you change that language around? To nurture your growth mindset, you need to build a really fantastic network of people around you, people that can help you, people that can assist you, people that can help you get into a really great growth mindset long term that you can bolster each each other up with, that you can learn from, mentorship from, um, that can take you along on the journey with you. People who also really live in this mindset often practice gratitude. And we hear about it enough that we know now that gratitude is a really key part of having a really healthy mental state. But for many reasons and in a growth mindset, what gratitude does is it reinforces that positive affirmation around the fact that you are learning, that you are not failing and that you are always open to feedback and optimizing yourself as a human. Writing things down or saying it out loud helps to solidify that and keep you moving forward towards the things you want to achieve. I love this one. Become an active participant in your perspective. It is all good and well to practice these things and to say that you need to do these things but you need to be the person who moves it forward. You need to be the person who backs yourself in, trusts your intuition and moves forward with the things you are trying to achieve, learn and optimise. Finally, a couple of things. See challenges, not problems. This goes hand in hand with that fixed mindset idea of seeing things as a problem they they may be problematic, but really what they actually are are just challenges in your day to day, in your week, in your month, in your year. When you see something as a challenge, it can be overcome. Whereas problems really set in our brain this idea that it might not be able to be done. A challenge can be um, can be challenged and can be taken on, whereas a problem feels a lot more definitive. So. Can you see something as a challenge? And then finally, celebrate your wins against those challenges. When you are going through your day-to-day, when you are, we're going to talk about what this looks like from a learning perspective, whether it's small things, big things, they are often just little things happening throughout your day. When you sit and you recognize and you celebrate these wins and gratitude comes back to this really perfectly, you can start to reinforce to your brain that you are absorbing new information, you are capable of conquering challenges and you are capable of moving forward and growing as a person. So celebrate those wins because when we when our brain fires and has a win, so to speak, or a success, our hormones want more of that. We want to keep doing the things that give us those wins, that that present us those challenges that we can overcome and have successes with. So when you get into that zone, you will want to learn more and more and more and continue to evolve more and more and more. So what are some ways that you guys can get started today? There are so many ways you can integrate lifelong learning and they're easy and they're simple and they're fun into your days into your weeks and make them into a habit. Let's hook into them and kind of look at what that looks like. So I want you to look at lifelong learning as some of these sorts of initiatives, because I know it's a huge topic and there's many different ways you can tackle it, but perhaps it's something like developing a new skill. If you take on a growth mindset, you are always open to learning how to do something new at home, at work, socially, 
you don't want to stop your skill base as just being, well, this is it. These are the things I know how to do and that's it. You are constantly developing new things, new kind of like notches in your belt of things you know how to do. It could be software related. It could be cooking related. It doesn't really matter. You're just constantly developing new skills as you go throughout your day. It might be something like self-taught study. It might be engaging in um, online courses or workshops or attending webinars. And it's teaching yourself those new skills that you want to achieve. Maybe it's actively sitting down and going through and studying a particular niche. It might be as simple as learning a new sport or activity, engaging in something team-based, taking yourself to a pasta-making class, joining the soccer team. Again, it doesn't really matter what it is, but you're open to learning new things that you didn't know how to do before. It might look like learning new technology. It might be, might be keeping yourself super advanced and not falling behind by understanding how to use all the apps in the latest iPhone or understanding the latest software that's been developed um, for Zoom and that you can then create webinars and run webinars for your workplace. It is keeping abreast of what is happening in the world and staying in line with that. Acquiring new knowledge could be as simple as constantly taking in some news every day, listening to podcasts and learning updates on bits and pieces, just taking in things you didn't know yesterday. And you don't might not think you're able to retain all that stuff, but you're constantly adding to your plethora of things your brain locks and loads and knows about. And finally, it could be upskilling and refreshing. Perhaps you are a marketer and you know your basics of marketing because you did it at university. But it's really important to not go, well, I've learned that thing and that's all there is to learn there and so I'm done. Tick that off. Constantly upskilling and refreshing yourself on the knowledge you have to make sure that your skill is continuously relevant, growing, evolving, and with the modern times, right? So even me as a marketer, I need to make sure that I'm staying abreast of what are the current trends, and activations that we are doing in marketing so that I can pull them out of my tool belt at any point. What are some powerful habits of lifelong learners that weave these things into their day-to-day? You can take on any of these at any point, and I'm going to strongly recommend some of these to make yourself into that learning mindset, right? First things first, and these are things that you know are good for you, but they're like always on the back list of the thing that I must do more of. Regular reading. Constantly challenging our brain to step away from the computer, step away from our phones and absorb information in a different way. It's a beautiful way to get some mindfulness, to get clarity and to immerse ourselves into a completely different realm. Great lifelong learners read regularly. They take courses and they upskill. They actively go and seek out courses for different things, a wide variety of things, and upskill the knowledge they already have. This one might seem a little odd, but a lifelong learner takes care of their mind and their body. When you are healthy and feeling fantastic and have the mind space and the and the health and well-being to be able to take on more learning, you are in a space to be ready for that. When your mental health is fantastic, you can be in a mindset of absorbing information through audiobooks, for attending different webinars, for taking on new information. And then the two start to help each other. The more upskilling and life learning you do, the happier your mind is going to be. The happier your mind is be, the more you're going to want to take on that life learning, those extra habits, those extra um, bits of information, those new skills. Lifelong learners are often absorbed in podcasts and audiobooks and using their time efficiently to be able to 
to be able to take in new multitasking skills. Personally, I am constantly listening to podcasts when I get ready in the morning and when I make dinner. They are wasted times where my hands are busy. I'm busy doing things, doing my hair or making my lunch or making my dinner. But I have the ability to absorb information and learn and the presence to learn information through podcasts and audiobooks whilst I am doing those activities. Another great habit is to get into the idea of attending seminars, webinars. If you were at this webinar today, well done because you are already on the path of lifelong learning, right? Seminars, workshops, networking events. Study Melbourne's Career Catalyst has a fantastic realm of events, workshops, webinars that you can attend at any point. And I'm thrilled to see you guys here because it means you're already contributing to that growth mindset to do better, to be better, right? Can you seek more out through Eventbrite, through Meetup? Uh, is there things that can you set yourself a goal of attending one every two months to be able to go along to and start to learn some information, hear from a different speaker, meet some new faces? If you are doing that, you are already doing more than everybody else because most people don't go ahead and attend these things. Which is a great segue into saying yes to opportunities. If you are offered an opportunity at work and it's a little bit out of your comfort zone, say yes. If your friend's doing something socially and you're like, oh, I don't know if, that's my if they're my people, will I know anyone there? Say yes, you'll meet someone. Saying yes to these opportunities, you do not know which path you can take it on, but your brain is being challenged. You are stepping out of your comfort zone. And these are all things that are just fuel for growing your mindset, for growing your ability to learn and develop new skills creating this delicious ecosystem that makes you a fantastic person, both in professional life and your personal life. Diversifying your passions is a really key one. Number seven, you don't have to just stick to what you know and the things that you've been doing for the last 10 years. Find new hobbies, find new passions. They say there are five hobbies that you need in life, right? If you know about personal brand, you've come to our personal brand sessions, you will know this. Things that um, produce you wealth and money, that's our jobs, that just let us keep going day to day. Things that challenge our mindset, things that keep our body moving, things that give us some mindfulness and nurture our spirit, and things that continuously help us to move along and learn and develop as a human, right? They could be anything. That could be a hobby that is like rock climbing. It could be um, meditation. It could be reading biographies. Constantly diversify your passions. Try new things. Learn new things. Build this breadth and scope of the things you have done and have tried in your life. And a really nice thing to do after you do those things is to track your progress. Keep a journal, keep a workbook, keep a vision board. We're going to come back to vision boards um, in a second. Write down the things that you do and try. Remind yourself at the end of every week and month the things that you have had a go at, achieved and learned. What a beautiful thing to reward your soul with to show you how far you have come. And you are already doing this day to day anyway. You're already growing and developing and trying new things, but you probably don't really take account of what those things are. So I'm going to set you a challenge here of if you are here and you're attending this webinar and you are interested in evolving and moving forward, then next week, Write down in the notes app of your phone every time you learn a new piece of information or try or do something that you haven't done before. Remind yourself of how far you're coming without even trying. And finally, lifelong learners get to know themselves really well. They know how they tick. They know how they work well. They know what are their best qualities. They know the places that they are most comfortable in playing and exploring. And they know how to get the best out of themselves as a human. We're going to go through some tools that will make lifelong learning and getting to know yourself a lot easier in a second. But these are some things you need to start doing. Screenshot this if you need to, to remind yourself of how you can keep churning forward. Great segue into getting to know yourself and your natural strengths and key qualities a little better. I want to talk about the VIA Institute 
it is a um, sensational personal uh, development test. You guys would have heard about some of these um, self-assessment tests like um, Myers-Briggs or the DISC, DISC test. They're often used in businesses to help you understand a bit more about your personality. I particularly love this one. Scan the screen and bring up this test. It is free to do. It takes 15 minutes. And the beautiful thing about this is that if you are entering into the job market right now and you are trying to figure out how to pitch yourself, what jobs to apply for, what things to kind of note on your CV as being the things that you do exceptionally well, this test will help to shine a light on those things. I'm going to show you a bit of an idea of what the kind of strengths are. Once you do the test, it will punch you back some of these um, some of these characters. These are the strengths that you can really focus on, and there's about 15 of them, I think. So we will you, you'll do the test. You'll ask you a bunch of, a bunch of questions about yourself and how you work and what makes you tick, and you might find that your top strength is creativity. So that means I want you to really hone in on and do things that nurture and organically make you more in a creative space. That is a space clearly that you play in really well, that comes really naturally to you and doesn't require a huge amount of effort. They are the things that bring our brain joy because they feel good because they feel really natural. And at the other end of the scale, you might find that perhaps something like, I know personally for me, teamwork is not that particularly high on my list of things that come naturally to me. I work really well on my own, but it doesn't mean that I don't need to work on my teamwork a little more. So you can see the things that are a bit, a bit further down the line and there's no right or wrong answer here, but perhaps you want to focus on the things you do really well as the things that drive you forward. And then where are the areas that you can use perspective, feedback, criticism to be able to look at and go, okay, are these places I can improve and do better at? And the great thing about this test is it provides you a lot of insight into these areas. It will hash them out a bit more and um, provide you some, some tools that you can use to start to finesse those areas or take advantage of those areas. If personality tests are your thing, and I think they're a really great thing to do to get to know yourself, a fun thing to do if you are sitting on a plane over the Christmas period, sitting at home with some time to spare, um, sitting and watching Netflix that you don't really need to be watching and you could actually be doing something to move yourself into a growth mindset. Truity is a fabulous site that has heaps and heaps and heaps of these tests from love languages to how you work best um, to more business-based ones and helps you understand things about yourself. Again, they're free, they're scientifically validated, and they're really great psychometric tests that you can do to discover a bit more about yourself. Something else I would encourage you to do, which I did a lot of at COVID, was I tested myself at the beginning of the year, and at the end of the year I tested myself with the same, the exact same personality tests to see if I had evolved and changed. As you should, because we are ever-evolving humans, and that is the 101 of growth mindset. So if you are changing, perhaps you can see where you've come from, which is, again, really nice to take note of these things so that you can reflect. Another thing you can get started on to really kickstart your lifelong learning journey after today is get on course. There are hundreds, thousands, dare I say millions, of free courses on the internet that people have put their time and energy and their experience into creating that you can tackle for free or for a really small charge. Anything and everything. If you need to upskill in a particular area of your niche to get um, to, to, to apply for jobs or get roles, use these areas like Coursera, Udemy and Skillshare to upskill and then you can note you have the skills ready to go to do that job. I don't want to hear that you can't tackle something on a job application because you don't have that specific skill can you go and teach yourself that skill to get that job I bet you can these are fantastic sites there's a plethora of information on them and there's a great amount of soft skills courses as well and one of the most fantastic ones is the science of well-being I have done this course four million people have done this course it is delivered by Yale American University which I'm sure you're very familiar with and it's on Coursera 
just search the science of well-being. It is an unreal course. It's a combination of video and self-paced um, tools. And it teaches you all about how to be the most well-being and get the most out of yourself and what we really need as humans to be happy. These are fantastic skills for you to be able to finesse when working in a team and working in a corporate environment. If you are moving into a workforce, understanding what makes people tick and how adults behave with one another is a really great soft skill to obtain. So if you want a really nice a really nice course to get kickstarted on, I strongly recommend the science of well-being. And here's another, I think this is the final tool I'm giving you guys today um, to see us out for this session. Get goal-oriented. Your life is for the taking. What do you want to achieve? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? What things do you want out of your months, out of your years, out of your entire life? You get to decide. Research shows that people who set specific challenging goals are 90% more likely to achieve higher performance compared to those who don't. Setting the right goals and even more importantly, setting them in the right way is the first step to success. One way I like to set goals is to use a application called Millanote. I set my goals through vision boards. I'm a marketer. My brain is incredibly creative. I do well with visuals. So for me, putting things down to a vision board helps me get a really clear direction of where I'm going, what I want to achieve, what it looks like, and those are things that get my brain firing. So I'm going to suggest to you today um, to have a go at this fantastic app. It's built out of Melbourne. I adore it. It's called Milanote. You can use a free version, and if you really love it, um, you can pay, I think it's $10 a month to be able to have the paid version, which means you can have unlimited visions and unlimited boards for whatever you like. The way that I approach my vision boards is I do them monthly. Each month I sit back and I think, what on earth do I want to achieve this month? What do I want? What do I want to learn? What do I want to obtain? It can be materialistic. It can be knowledge-based. It can be travel-based. It can be things I want to do in the future. It can be whatever you like. It's your vision. It's your board. It's your life. Start noting down the things you want so that you have something to look back on and start to kind of tick off the things you're achieving. An idea of what that might look like is something like this. I've just pulled this together as an example. Perhaps you're building out, and I'd love you to do this. This is a great time to be having this conversation. You're about to go into a new year. New years are fantastic for our brains. It gives us an intention to set a new goal and an, a set time period to achieve it. So for 2023, I want you to start thinking about the things you want in life. What do you want to, want to achieve for the next year? I want to revisit my VIA um, character strengths. I know what I usually come up with on those um, those exams, but it's been a big year and I've done a lot of growth as a person. So I'm going to revisit and see what my key focus areas should be to both nurture and the things I might need to improve on from the VIA test. I want to learn French. I want to go to Europe next year. I've never been. I want to see all the different places and I want to be comfortable while I'm there. So I'm going to teach myself French over the next year. There are so many ways you can self-teach pretty much anything in the world online. So start bringing those things into a place that can keep you accountable. I want to read more. So what are the books that I want to read? Put those books down to a vision board, start mapping it out. And then you can make this as fluffy or as fun as you want. Do you want to have a particular style and personal brand? Start visioning what that brand looks like for you. If you do this and you come back to it and you reflect on it, I can tell you from my own experience of the last year, I am shocked at how many of the things I've popped on my boards that I've actually achieved because I've kept myself accountable. Milanote's fab. You'll love it. It's drag and drop. Um, you can load things from Google from your desktop, from social media, all in one place. Think Pinterest, but like a million times better. It's awesome. And finally, we need to make things a habit. So if you want to become this lifelong learner, if you want to commit to like, I don't know, absorbing and listening to a podcast every morning, you want to switch out some of your Netflix time for TED Talk time to learn new things, you want to read more, you want to meet a new person every month, whatever it is, 
How do you keep yourself accountable for that? We need to make it into a habit. And these are the principles we know that make habits stick. First of all, pick something simple. Let's start with like, you want to start, excuse me, reading more. Commit to 30 days. Tell yourself you're going to have a crack for 30 days. Make it daily. We actually need to repeat these things over and over and over again to make them really stick. So we're going to read a book and we're going to read it daily. Start simple. Perhaps it's not 10 pages a night. Perhaps it's three. Perhaps it's one. And then you build up. Start small so it's achievable. Set reminders. Do you need to put a reminder in your phone? Do you need to schedule it into your calendar? At first, you're going to need to trig your brain to be like, oh, that thing I need to do. Set reminders and use them. Maybe use a tracking app. There's lots of fantastic apps for whatever skill, habit you want to create in life. There's an app for everything. Maybe find an app. Get a buddy. If I want to read a book every, if I want to start reading more books, maybe I get, uh, maybe I make a book club with two friends. Maybe I ask my friendship group if anybody else is reading this particular book. So you have someone to talk about it with. So you have somebody that you can keep accountable with. We do it with TV shows all the time. We're all touching base on Game of Thrones or whatever the show is that we're watching. Why can't we do the same with other habits as well? Find your passion, find your people. Form a trigger. I've now created a great trigger in my in my day-to-day that I know that when I'm doing my hair and makeup of a morning that I listen to a podcast. So naturally, the minute I get out my hair straightener, I think, oh, I need to put a podcast on. It's become its own reminder without having to set a reminder. So find a trigger and stick to it. And finally, write down your wins. You you better bet that when I start reading these books, I'm going to write down the books that I've that I've read this year. So I've got this beautiful thing that I can reflect back on each week, each month, each year to see how far I've come. Our brain loves reward and recognition. If we do the thing and then we remind ourselves that we've done the thing, we'll want to do more of that thing. So gratitude journals, vision boards, however you want to choose to keep this stuff, just write it down. And that brings us to the end of this session. I am conscious of time. There's a few more things I want to get through because I want to give you time for Q&A. But before we get there, um, I do want to invite you to our, our event we have next week. If you're based in Melbourne, please come along to our next event in our student series, Building Your Own Startup. It is a panel event. Uh, we have Daniel Tan from Vimy and Baxter Knight from Liz Pay, both founders of incredible tech businesses. Come along, have um, some light supper with us, network, meet some people, attend an event, add it to your lifelong learning next Thursday, the 8th of December. And you can register by jumping onto that QR code that you see on the screen there. And also I want to remind you guys that we also have career coaching available. We have people here at Intern Match that are ready to help you with resumes, LinkedIn reviewing, prepping you for interviews, or just general career advice. They're ready to rock and roll. So book a session at a time that suits you. Maybe book a session for next year to keep yourself accountable to um, revisit and, and look at in the future. Lock those in. Um, you get two a year. So please use that QR code to book a session with a career coach. And why not? Free service, hash it out whilst you have the opportunity. I'm going to um, ask if there's any questions that you guys can submit through the through the chat or through the Q&A. I am going to stop sharing my screen just so I can see any Q&A that's coming through there. Use the chat or the Q&A, guys. Any feedback, comments or concerns, you can pop through there. I'll just give you a second. And this recording, guys, will be available for you to access at any point. You can remind yourself of anything that we've covered, any of those apps if you didn't get a chance to, um, to copy that QR code across. I will make sure that they're available on the Study Melbourne site for you to be able to access at any point. And I've just got one question here, a great question and an in-depth question, which we love. How do you deal with the comparison? Oh, Comparison is the thief, the thief of joy, and I don't have a name to pop to that, and that's completely okay, but it is a great question. I think um, a great example I'm going to give you is that I actually have a girlfriend who deliberately commits herself to lifelong learning and upskilling herself at any point 
for that exact reason, right? We are humans. It is natural to compare ourselves to the achievements of what everybody else is doing. We do it at any point in our career and our lives. And that's just how our brains work and that's okay. But I learned a lot from my friend Maddie who said this, and it's a really good reason to hook into lifelong learning. And that is that if you power yourself and empower yourself with knowledge, that it can help you to feel ready and prepared for any scenario, regardless what that scenario is. If you're entering into a new crowd or attending a networking event, if you are um, stepping into a new environment that you feel like you have and you do have fantastic, interesting, fantastic things to offer and knowledge that you have gained. And the more that you empower yourself with that knowledge through learning, through taking in new information, through trying new things, that will help to combat that um, natural, I think, insecurity that we all have. And we all do have it at all levels, regardless if you're a CEO or you're a graduate. So use that that there's so many free things that you can do to empower yourself with that knowledge. And we are all different. And that's the deliciousness of being a human. We're supposed to be all different. And it's not, um, it shouldn't be seen as comparison. Use your brain to help you combat that and just note that you have sensational things to offer and upskill where you have any insecurities. Use the tools and resources we've given you today. I've got a couple more questions coming through, so we'll hook into these. I mentioned we should have regular reading, but I don't know any kind of books I should read. Do you have any book suggestions? That's a great question. The question is, um, mentioning that we should have regular reading, but I don't know which kind of books I should read. Do I have any suggestions? Well, we are spoiled for choice because there is a plethora of things available to us. And at the end of the day, what I enjoy reading is going to be very different to what um, the next person enjoys reading. And the, the, the truth is, you don't have to read more. It's just one of the tools. I suggest that you take on more of lots of these things if you want to become a great lifelong learner and, and really grow your mindset. And perhaps reading is the path that you take. I don't enjoy reading and I don't have a huge amount of time in my day. So my alternative to reading is to move into things like podcasts and audiobooks, like I said, so I can multitask, so I can cook my dinner and commute on the way to work, which is a fantastic little sp splice of wasted time that we can add extra things in that we can absorb and multitask with. And so I do audiobooks. I love doing biographies. I love learning about other people's journeys. At the moment, I'm working um, a lot in like the tech and the startup space. So I want to learn from other people in the tech and the startup space. So have a think about one, the things that interest you. What are your hobbies and passions? What is the job that you want to step into? What are the roles you want to step into? And what are the industries you want to step into? They're a great place to start. Learn, absorb, find out things of the experiences of other people who have done these journeys already and start there. And guess what? If you don't like it or it's not interesting, you don't have to keep going. You can pop that book down, finish that audiobook, and just jump into another one. You don't have to actually pun intended bookend any of these books or these stories or these podcasts. You can keep trying things until you figure out what you like, which is the whole point of this. Keep trying new things to find your, your passions, to find your people. Why is it so hard to motivate ourselves compared to motivating others? I feel this is a fantastic question, Trishali. Why is it so hard to motivate ourselves compared to motivating others? If my friend feels they can't do something, I jump in to encourage them, but I can't do it so easy for myself. I feel like you're speaking from my soul because um, this is something that, gosh, you're so right. We do this with, with ourselves all the time. And again, it doesn't matter what phase of life you are at. We are sensational at imparting advice onto other people. And I think the reason for that is, and by no means am I a, a psychologist or um, a professional who has spent time in this, but I have spent a lot of time on self-development, right? And that is that it is a lot easier to step away from a situation when it's not yourself and you can step back and you can look at the the situation holistically, right? Because you're not in the situation. You're standing out and looking at it from a third party's perspective. So I think you need to acknowledge that is understandable that you would have a better lens 
across somebody else's situation because you can hear, you can watch their um, their body language, how they're telling you the story. You can hear the perhaps the concern or the passion in their voice when they're saying it. So you're getting every part of the story to then be able to impart wisdom that you probably know for yourself anyway. But when you are in it, no matter what the situation is, it is really tricky to motivate or um, provide clarity to yourself. And I think the only way to change something is to start kind of adding repetition to it, right? So that's why habit is a really important part of this. And why, I'm, why I, like I said, I'm really glad that we have having this discussion at the end of the year, because you have the opportunity to motivate yourself. You've got some kickers, you've got a, a calendar date, you've got the warmer weather here in Melbourne, you're, you're, you're able to set up some really great habits to continue to motivate yourself. And with that, because you know you're so great at motivating others, use that, find a buddy for whatever it is that you want to achieve, whatever it is you want to move forward with and get them to tee up with you. If you want to read more, make a two-person book club. If you want to start working out more, find a person you can do that with or join a place that has people doing that already. Use the power of teams to motivate one another because it's normal that we're not great at motivating ourselves because we are all sitting in our armchair giving fantastic advice to others, but it's really tricky when you are in the situation and you can't see clarity from that. I hope that helps, but it's a really profound um, and beautiful question. Thank you for asking. How are we going for time? We've got time for one more. Personally, I enjoy nonfictions. One tip I can give you is that you can read multiple books at the same time. You don't need to finish a book in order to start a new one. I love this. This is beautiful advice. You can have certain types of books, e.g. science, history, fiction, self-help, and read at the same time and choose ones that suit your mood. That is a fantastic piece of advice. I'm hoping I'm going to pronounce your name right. Huey, is that right? That is, that is actually the advice I needed to hear too. As someone who wants to read more, you are so right. I read a lot of um, a lot of bios or self-help-based books or professional development, and they can be a bit heavy or a bit um, dry in times when you need a bit of escapism. Perhaps you're sitting, having a beautiful time over the summer and you don't really want to go into that space. I think that is sensational advice. Thank you so much for um, sending that through. I'm actually going to screenshot these questions because they are all fantastic. And I want to thank you guys finally before we... Um, it is right. Thank you so much. I want to thank you guys for coming along today and being so engaged. We love you guys attending our webinars and our events. And please make sure you visit the Study Melbourne Career Catalyst site to sign up to all the fantastic um, services we have for you. I'd love to see some of you at the event next week. And if not next week, next year, we will have plenty of events and webinars on. So please visit those and sign up. And I will see you guys at the next session. Thank you so much for coming along. Bye.